Hey, Russ from GFN Gaming here, and today's video I'm going to be making a modular gaming board for a sci-fi setting. I mainly play Kill Team, and the new edition is fast approaching general release, so I wanted to make sure I had a good board ready for gaming, and I've always wanted to try making one, and more than that, making a modular one. The idea being that I could add different tiles as and when I wanted to rotate in new settings, and also as I film battle reports, I ultimately wanted to be able to create custom boards for each of the kill teams to use as kind of display pieces for each of the teams. Like a crashed Lehman Rust tank for the guard, a mining station for the gene stealer cult, a mass grave or a big hole for the Krieg, that kind of thing. Anyway, I'm pretty new to building boards in general, so I thought I would record the progress, warts and all. Things went wrong for sure, but in the end, I'm very happy with the results. I'd only made one prior attempt before this, using foam board as the base, however, it was very thin and ultimately warped. Um, so with this fresh terror in mind, I went for plywood as my base, and I went on the thick side, opting for a 12 mil thickness. Um, I got the plywood shortly after having to rip all the terrain off the foam board, so I was kind of fresh in my mind. So you probably would be fine to use a thinner, uh, like a 9mm or even a 6mm, but I was like, no more warping, so I went for a 12mm. The plywood that I got is 12mm thick hardwood plywood, um, and I got it um, 10 inches by 11 inches, um, so that when I put them all together, I would have a 22 by 30 inch board. I got this at Wix, but you could also, I looked at a site called Cut My Plastic that also offered uh, pre-cut wood. Um, but whatever you've got close to hand obviously will work. I used the quick drying basing glue from Geek Gaming Scenics, uh, along with almost everything else I used to glue down the buildings uh, and the terrain features, and going in for what I thought would be interesting setups. With the new kill team having vantage points, I did try to include at least one story buildings or structures on most of the tiles. Then I also used the modeling compound, again from Geek Gaming Scenics, to secure the terrain pieces and also add some general contours to the flat tiles. Uh, this stuff is really good, you just mix it in with water until it takes on like a slushy tuna mayo consistency and then slap it down. It dries really quickly so I used a small tub so that I wouldn't mix too much at any one time um, and after about 20 minutes or so you can kind of smooth it over with your fingers and a little bit of water and that's what I did. Then the first of my mistakes. Luckily, both of them basically happened at the same time. Um, I had a rummage through my hobby cupboard and found some interesting texture paints that I had. Um, the first was this opaque crackle paint, which I had used before for some ice bases, and it worked really nicely. So I haplessly started applying this to the bare plywood. Look at me go. So naive. So completely unprepared for the horror lurking in the future. Ah, uh, to be young again. Anyway, don't do this. I had only previously used this on a painted layer, and I'm guessing even though I had sanded the plywood, it did not adhere to the top layer as I had hoped. The problem came only when I realized this after it had dried and started flaking. I only show a small section of this, so it might not seem so bad, but it was everywhere. Basically, you ran your finger across it, and they would just all pop off, leaving the white uh, of the modeling compound or the plywood underneath. Anyway, back to the past and the next mistake, albeit less costly. I also found in the hobby pile an unopened tub of natural sand, which in retrospect I believe is more of a medium to be used with acrylic paint to create a texture paint. Anyway, at this stage it appears I was just happily throwing everything I had at the boards, so I also used some of this stuff. It was easy enough to apply and might have even worked, however as it started drying it was leaving kind of brush stroke marks and it also took a very long time to dry and it was still a little tacky when I kept returning to it. Um, I was very eager to move on with the project so I just basically opted to scrape most of this off so I could continue without having to leave it for ages to dry. I'm sure you can relate when you get in that hobby zone, you just want to plow through and do as much as you can without those long letting it dry stages. So that's what I did. 
Anyway, with this step all done, I then sprayed the whole thing gray. I'm using a rattle can and I'm just using Mechanica's standard gray here. Uh, this was more of a base for the terrain. Some of it had been painted, some of it was bare. So I just sprayed it all down and then the base itself, I used a rattle can again, I think it's gold and it's called red brown. Uh, and I used this just to base all the ground, basically avoiding as much of the terrain as I could so it still was gray. Then with this dry, I moved on to finishing the terrain before I laid the ground proper. I basically just used sponges to paint pretty much all of the terrain apart from uh, some of the smaller items like the barrels, which I just painted with a brush first and then I finished them with the sponge. For painting the terrain, I basically just used sponges. Um, I used smaller sponges for the smaller areas. I just put some gray uh, on a dry palette and just started dappling this all over, leaving the brown um, if it had got onto the train in the recesses so it kind of looked worn. Um, and then I just mixed other colors onto the dry palette and then just started to include them also. Uh, for any metal item or item that I thought might have a bit of metal on, after I'd put on the gray, I would then maybe put on a bit of orange and then finish it with a lighter silver uh, just to give the edges kind of a, like a spark kind of look as if it's been hit and it's brought back like a, a flash of the original silver. Um, for the other bits of terrain, the bigger buildings, I had some blue from when I um, painted the uh, crashed land speeder. So again, I painted that with a sponge, basically dappling on the blue, then some orange and silver. So I just added that into some of the buildings, just kind of like randomly putting it on in places that thought it might look all right. If it came on too strong, I could go back to one of the original colors and just dapple over it again. Um, I don't think there's any wrong choices here. Just put in as many colors as you want. If you think a color would be the natural highlight, like when I painted the green barrel, I used the natural highlights, but instead of painting them or dry brushing them, I just dappled them on. And then I did some orange and some silvers, basically. Just experiment. It doesn't really matter at this point. It's all gonna look weathered and that's kind of the point. With the terrain done, then I could finally start on the ground. Again, I returned to Geek Gaming Scenics for their amazing base ready range, and I got a few bags of Arid Earth and Grim Dark City Rubble, as I wanted a mix of the two to be my ground covering. Using some fast drying basing glue, also from uh, Geek Gaming Scenics, which at this point I should probably say are not sponsoring this video. They just do amazing products for basing and board building. Anyway, to start this process, I was very careful. I didn't want to waste anything, so I basically apply a very small section of the glue, brushing it into the area with an old brush, and then I would carefully apply the base materials and then repeat. This then devolved into me taking the tiles outside, smearing them with PVA glue like I was an oil bearer at a Roman orgy, and then shaking out the bags all over the tiles because it was quicker and I just wanted to get it done. After I'd finished the first pass, I'd realized some of the tiles' edges didn't really match up when I lined them all up. Uh, so once it had dried, I went over the edges with a mix of the two again, um, just to make sure that the edges were at least similar so that when they put them all together, they would match up. So with the sand down, I then uses the matte seal and spray from, um, I'm actually not sure, not sure where I got that from. Hmm. Anyway, I sprayed this all over the bases and left it to dry. I repeated this process about three times in total because I knew the boards would be getting a lot of play, so I wanted to make sure they were secure. Once it was all dry, I then started adding some finishing touches to the terrain pieces. As the base for this was going to be a sci-fi human settlement, or more specifically an imperial planet or city, I printed off some 40k posters, cut them out, wrinkled them up, and then applied them to the buildings, like the wall sections, some of the barrels, using the same basing glue, mixing it in with a bit of water so it made like a, a wallpaper paste kind of thing. I slopped this on the back of the posters and then put the posters in place and then returned to the glue and just dappled on the front of the poster and then just painted it over with it to give it a nice solid coat. The last detail I put in was some grass tufts which I just added at random spaces on the board just to break up the, uh, the rubble basically. With that done, I then used my rattle can and sprayed matte varnish over everything, making sure there was a nice coat on all the terrain pieces and the edges of the board which I'd painted black. I'm not sure it matters which varnish you use. Um, I used the Winsor Newton just because I already had it and I tested a little bit of it first to make sure that it wasn't gonna leave any marks or anything. Uh, once it was fine, I then just used that on everything and it turned out fine. 
And that's it, that's the board done. I've got six tiles that I can move around creating different scenes. I'll probably add some more as time goes on, but for the moment that's spot on for the new version coming out soon. I just wanna say thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.